Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, it's basically morning in Malaysia right now. And uh, before we start off uh, my session here, so we would like to thanks to our sponsors that are uh, sponsors for this event. And I do have a quiz uh, in my session. There's two questions in the quiz. So if you manage to get them right and get as much rights that you can in the quiz so that you can able to win some prize. Today's session is that we are going to talk about uh, explore the integration of uh, conditional at control. Just a brief introduction of uh, who am I. I'm uh, Sabrina K. And I'm currently living in uh, Klang, Malaysia, which is a small town in uh, Malaysia. And I just recently received my uh, MVP award uh, this month, October. Yes, 1st of October. I was awarded under the category of uh, Enterprise Mobility. I have has since started my journey in the work industry since uh, 2017. I usually involve myself more on terms, the on-premises, cloud, cloud security and uh, network security. And my title is Senior Consultant at uh, Unit Consulting and Services. So this is actually our logo right here. Hold on, let me try to switch to a laser pointer. Yeah, that would be great. So, and I have a few likings of my own besides uh, doing technical stuff. I do like to cooking and uh, watch some movies if I have my free time and also do some traveling. But due to pandemic still, uh, still existed and our traveling kind of uh, restricted. And if you'd like to know more about uh, my technical skills and uh, uh, troubleshooting and all those uh, bugs and anything, you can actually go to my blog uh, using this URL. And if you like to uh, get connected with me on uh, LinkedIn, you can actually browse or search for my name, Sabrina K S Y. If you do not know much about uh, Malaysian people, majority of us can actually speak more than one language. So I can mainly speak Mandarin, English, Bahasa Malaysia, Cantonese and uh, Hokkien. And let's see what's um, famous about Malaysia. I think Malaysia famous about uh, their mixed culture, and the two towers right here, this is the KL Tower and, uh, sorry, this is KLCC Tower and this is KL Tower, if not mistaken. <laughs> and this is actually our, our flag. So we have uh, red and white, blue and yellow colors. If you want to uh, learn more about mixed culture, I mean, in terms of traveling to multiple countries, why not just travel to Malaysia, right? You have Malays, you have Chinese, you have Indian, all the foods are all there in a single, in a single country. Okay, let's start off our agenda for today is we're going to talk about uh, what is Azure AD conditional access and then we move on to talking the app control and why you actually need app control. And then we jump to the demonstration next, talking about where you can set your app control and how does the account actually looks, up, looks like when you have this entire configuration set up in your environment. I know everyone will start off uh, wanting to know what sort of licensing that you need 
to have this feature, I will put that into the last of this uh, entire session and let you know about what this technology have to be uh, have to provide you guys. So if you are new here, uh, new to Azure and new to uh, what is conditional access, so I will give you a brief introduction of uh, what is conditional access. So as you can see that the conditional access is actually located in the Azure portal under the category of uh, service, which is the Azure Active Directory. And what it actually provides is that it provides a simplest if then statement kind of policy for administration, administration to set up and configure for their environment. What it actually does is that it has the uh, capability to control users access based on a condition that is set. And the basic goal here for this conditional access is actually to help your environment to have a secure organization and actually not interrupting uh, the user productivity. So by means that this policy can actually help you in terms of turning on as a testing mode or so-called the report only. And you can actually enforce or you can just uh, keep that policy turned off for future reference. And coming in terms to the diagram of uh, understanding what's conditional access, as you may see this diagram quite often in the Microsoft Docs. So starting on your left, this is the stage of uh, we call the signal stage where this is your Azure portal, also called your conditional access. What it can take is that it can take user identity or location base or device platform can be Windows or iOS or types of uh, applications like cloud application. You can say your Zscaler, your Office 365 application, you can create them into a single conditional access policy. And this policy, once you are configured, they actually monitored real time. They are not schedule based, so it's a real time detection. So once a conditioner has met, and then the next thing, next stage will be coming to the action, which is verify every access attempt. If a conditioner is met and it is actually verified as to allow access, it will allow that particular condition access and proceed to allow them to access to any further application or data that they wish to uh, access to. And if they are uh, to also allow in terms of uh, meeting that condition and you require MFA, you can actually set this MFA before proceeding to access to the apps or data. So these are the two options. There are more options that you can actually set besides require MFA based on certain uh, use cases. And if that particular condition doesn't met, you can actually uh, set the action to block that access. So user will have no further access to any application or data in your tenant. So once we have got that uh, understanding clear in terms of what conditional access does, now we jump into one of its feature, which is the conditional access app control. So what this app control does is that it uses a uh, reverse proxy architecture and it has the capability to integrate with your IDP. So IDP actually stands for Identity Provider. And it, uh, once you set up this app control, what it actually does is that it will monitor any cloud app application access and the sessions 
So what sort of activity they did, uh, like sign in logs and uh, some creating or modification in terms within that application during the access. Next, we come to the what sort of uh, action that is being provided in the app control is that once a session being detected, uh, if that particular activity is supposed not to be uh, uh, not to be uh, assessed, allowed, you can actually set up a policy to block it. You can do it as a customization, or you can just wanting to have a monitoring. But do take note that the monitoring feature uh, action is actually under the preview mode. So there's a uh, pros and cons here. So the actual cons right here is that there's some uh, limitation in terms of for iOS devices and uh, uh, Mac OS. It does actually monitors well in terms of web base or application base. And it also helps to monitor your mobile level. So before you actually apply this uh, conditional access app control to your environment, right, make sure you try to set a condition in terms of the device platform to exclude uh, Apple devices. If you had included the Apple devices and you turn back that policy on, right, it will uh, it will start to capturing the iOS devices and then they have uh, problems in terms of other application to log in. And uh, this has been uh, something still investigating under the Azure team back end. So, and you try to turn, try to exclude it back afterwards, it will still have the catch in the uh, app control. So, they still can't uh, tell me about uh, when can this catch to be cleared. So that's why this monitoring mode is still under preview. Why do we actually need this uh, app control, first of all? I think security breach is not something new uh, here. And due to the pandemic, I think security breach has been increasing drastically, aggressively, you can say. As you can see, there's a few articles that you can see here where security breaches of uh, the top, shut the top in the year 2020. And uh, you can see nowadays a lot of news talking about ex-employee or employee of a company has been uh, leaking out, uh, leaking out data. And Taking out data to uh, the black market and uh, so on, hackers and all this. Um, I think someone just turned off their turn on their camera, the audience. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, another slide of uh, why do we actually need this app control is that you you start to ask yourself a uh, question that uh, how is your user sharing data? First of all, do you know? And what sort of application that you actually have control in terms of uh, your users, how they are using? And are you actually confirm that a particular department A have uh, access to the department B data or are they allowed to actually share those data to public? So these are the few questions that you have to confirm with yourself as an IT. And are the data access required some sort of conditions like MFA to only proceed to access the data and uh, read it or modify it and so on. Do they have a level of security there? Does your user know the files that they are actually uploading, downloading, are they actually even safe? Do you know uh, that your users sharing uh, organization data to uh, 
unauthorized application like trans trans uh, trans transferring uh, files from one drive to probably Dropbox or from other third party uh, application. Do you know that? So these are actually a uh, few questions that you can ask yourself. And I think there's a lot of uh, increase in terms of uh, employees uh, exposing company data. I mean, uh, why does this increase here is that here are the few reasons the increase happened that the ex employees are exposing data is quite high. So the first is traditional workplace. So the workplace hasn't been uh, updated. So they are not in the modern kind of a workplace where they train their uh, users with the new technology or so on. And higher demand, people are actually demanding more in their work, uh, like salary and all those. And some people are seeking for fast money, fast money method. And the fourth option is debt. I mean, during the pandemic, I think a lot of people have uh, dealing with loan shark a lot. So they are in debt and they are in desperation and so on. So they, they took those data and sold it off in the black market. And the fifth, it could be lack of training or uneducation. So uh, every organization, some of them, they do a uh, quarterly training, security training. Uh, some, they don't do it. Uh, so that is why the employees tends to not know um, the risk in terms of exposing the data. They only know the heaven of exposing this data is that they get money and so on. And the last is that uh, accidental. So we do have uh, employees uh, sometimes accidentally send something or download something. So as we all know, employees are all humans. So accidental action uh, tends to happen. So let's come to learning how the redirection actually works. So uh, when you turn on this app control, right, your entire cloud app security, uh, you can choose which cloud app security that you want to uh, monitor. But uh, in my case, I will select all and it will monitor all the cloud app security URL. So how the rig direction actually works. So the first is that you have uh, cloud users or Office 365 users they log into SharePoint. So this is your default SharePoint URL for every tenant. So once they access, the Azure portal will actually monitor this access and then they will see that this is actually under the app control condition. Then it will initiate a redirection to Microsoft Cloud Ad Security. And Microsoft Cloud Ad Security will direct a monitored URL to the Office 365 users. So you can see the URL has been uh, changed from the default with a new URL, the mcast.ms URL. So you will see this URL. User will also see that URL at the top that this entire SharePoint Online session is being under monitored. So here is a sample of the image of how the uh, monitored URL looks like. So it looks like something like that. You have your tenant domain, all Microsoft.com and uh, MCAS.ms. And you can see that this prompt can actually be turned off if you want to monitor silently behind the user without uh, having this kind of uh, notification. So I mean, if you have, if you want to notify the user that the organization is actually under monitored, but usually I wouldn't recommend to turn this on because uh, why would you want to tell a burglar that saying, hey, um, Sunday I'm gonna set up a CCTV and uh, please take note 
Ah, you are you are actually telling the burger that you are setting up CCTV on Sunday. So, if you are telling the burger that, they will come in with a full full suit of a uh, astronaut, uh, suit or whatever, and come and rob your house. <laughs> so, that is uh why, never reveal whether your organization is being monitored to the users. Here are the few cloud as security uh, being uh, here are the few cloud as security that's registered under the Azure AD. So you can see you have Intune, Planner, uh, Stream, Teams, and uh, so on. You can actually register your third party application to Azure AD if they are compatible with the Azure AD. If you do not know how to register those application to Azure AD, you can actually go to this site here. I had a uh, reference link uh, amended to this slide. So you can go there and uh, try to register those uh, application to the Azure AD Connect. Uh, sorry, Azure AD. Coming to the license, I think this is what everyone wants to know. What's the licensing? What's the requirement to actually get uh, conditional access app control to be running in your environment? So if you are having E5 license, so this is already covered to you in terms of uh, app control and the cloud app security. If you are under a budget, uh, if you're under a budget, you can actually choose the two options below here. You can choose uh, Azure AD Premium 1 with the Microsoft Cloud App Security license, not the discovery. So Cloud App Security has uh, two types of uh, 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 license. They have one is just covering the discovery and one is the full suite. Full suite. Or you can actually uh, ask the identity provider to provide you the license and you can purchase together with the card as security. Same goes, not the discovery. You have to purchase the full suite of uh, card as security. And do take note that the license are to be purchased per user, not per tenant, because of uh, each user session are being monitored. So session are all under Azure uh, portal. So that is the reason why license should be purchased per user, not per tenant. Let's come to the demonstration for now. Okay, let me try to minimize this slide. And let's jump to our demonstration. Okay, this is my test tenant of Fish 365. And I am currently using the account called Tech Admin to log into my office portal. And I assign the EMS E5 license and the business premium license. So you can see you need to make sure you have the Azure AD Premium 1 and the Microsoft Cloud Ad Security, this portion. Okay. Not the discovery. Is the card security one? So let's go to see how the policy works. So the policy is actually located in the Azure Active Directory. Okay, still loading up. Okay, so we go to Azure Active Directory under the security portion, conditional access. 
and I created uh, earlier. So I name it as a uh, Catsby apps because it's integrating with the card as security. If you are still new with card as security, usually we call it the central security portal uh, dashboard in terms of monitoring. Uh. Monitoring of all the security products that is under the uh, Microsoft 365. So under this policy, as you can see that the there's a conditions assignment. So users or groups, card security, and the following conditions. You can actually specify a particular user that you want to monitor. You can specify the card apps. So if you want to select you can actually select them. So it only monitor that particular card apps. Okay. So under a condition, so every condition, as I say, you have to define your device platform right here. Okay. And say configured and select your device platform. Make sure that you exclude iOS or uh, Apple devices. I mean, nobody really uses a uh, Windows phone. Nah. So if you don't want to choose this option like that, you can actually just select exclude and just exclude these two Apple product. So you can see these are the few following condition that you can actually set in the conditional access. So let's jump to enabling the app control. App control is under the section category. So you can see that I already have it on for monitoring only. Oh, I can see that there are block downloads. Yeah, just turn on in the preview mode. So I can see they're actually updating their blocking action, which is good. So that's mean there's some uh, improvement. We are gonna see this and uh, in future. So you enable this policy as turning on, so you save it, okay? So I don't need to save it. Oh, wait, let me save it first. How long does this policy actually um, take impact into your environment? Is depending the size of the environment, the larger, the longer it is, because it would have to scan and uh, actually study all your users uh, login uh, activities and all those. Okay, once that is completed, setting up that policy, now you can actually go to your card at security to have a look what's the outcome. So if you purchase the full suite of the card security, you have, will have uh, this nice looking dashboard right here. As you can see, they can ever, they can, why is it called the so-called the central security dashboard is that you can see that you can actually monitor application, investigating users. You can even detect infected malware or uh, off, off uh, I mean the uh, authentication for applications. And you can even have a nice dashboard right here. Do you see the countries of uh, activities? You can even integrate with DLP alerts and uh, so on. There's many more that you can integrate with the card security. So let's jump to looking at the app control. So, okay, 
So the app control uh, session are being recorded under the investigation portion, connected apps. And the conditional access app control. So it's right here under this category. Every card and security setup, you must really have to uh, connect, create your app connectors. So Office 365 and the Microsoft Azure. Okay, let's come back right here. So as I have did some few testing in terms of uh, trying to log in to the uh, card and security, uh, sorry, cloud applications. So you can see that I did log into the 365 Admin Center, Azure, and uh, Card as Security Portal. So this is the one, it's actually being monitored. And SharePoint Online, Teams, and uh, Office Portal. Why is the Teams in under preview mode? So uh, basically, the monitoring of a team session is under preview mode. And if you want to exclude teams from the conditional access, you can proceed to do that if it's have uh, impacted your user productivity. So I do have a customer came to me and saying that the, the session monitoring for teams application has impacted them. But further, uh, further troubleshooting, they had a integrated third party app into the teams, which is, uh, if not mistaken, some sort of a calling system. So we had to add the calling system, uh, sorry, we had to exclude the calling system and our teams uh, for the moment. And let's take a look at one of the session right here. Let's try to see. Uh, yeah, 365 Admin Center. So the, they will give you a dashboard, a very nice dashboard right here, showing you the country uh, statistic of uh, active users and the activity chart here. Coming to info, it will show you the application information. So what does that mean, application information? It means that the security, is this application uh, compliant with the security? Uh, what sort of encryption protocol is using? Uh, is it uh, file sharing uh, compliant and all those? And compliance in terms of, uh, are they compliant with the SOC tree and so on? And in terms of legal, whether are they compliant with the legal or not. So as you can see, its rating is 10, which has been good. And the next thing is the accounts. So it will show you accounts of uh, who has logged into the admin center. Um, sorry, I just had this testing turned on yesterday, so it haven't propagated uh, correctly. So let me try to refresh. Okay, it's still not on. Anyway, it's okay. I will show you another uh, application later. In terms of uh, activity log, so this is what you will detect. The single sign-on log on of the tag admin. So it will show you what sort of devices. Um, so I was on a PC and it was in the Windows 10 using a Edge Chromium. And you can see in terms of general, they will show you this following information. If you want to see a user base, you can get this uh, uh, information in terms that this user is actually an internal user with the administration rights. You can even choose your sort of action. You want to suspend or uh, require them to re-sign again have uh, IP addresses. You can see that I'm uh, using time.com right now, my ISP provider. I'm using time.com and my location. And they can even uh, give you 
action in terms of whether you want to tag this IP address as a blacklist or whitelist. Okay, that's all for the activity log. Okay, alerts, you can actually set a card as security policy to alert you for any uh, activities, type of activities or accounts. So let us go back to finding application that can show accounts. Um, okay, I think this one should be the one. Point, yep. So in under accounts, it will show something like that. It will show username, email address, what sort of application, and is it under the monitoring? So you can see uh, instance, any sub apps it has, and so on. You can see the activity logs. So these are the activity logs is being monitored. Okay, so you can you can see my sign in log and uh, what was the device that I'm using and uh, what was the ISP I'm using and the IP addresses. You can actually see that. You have users. You have a very nice uh, statistics here. IP addresses. You can actually uh, filter them to view to view. So yeah, these are all the logs that you can see. If you are talking about the retention of uh, how long are all these activity being kept is Usually it will be between 90 days or 180 days. So this is how you see the condition of connected apps. Okay, if you want to turn off the, the monitoring prompt, you can actually go to settings. Uh, under settings, scroll to the bottom, you have a uh, user monitoring right here. So you make sure that this is unchecked before you uh, proceed on setting up your app control environment. This is actually turned on by default, so you, I would recommend that you turn it off. So to not let user know that they are being monitored. So going back here, if you want to know, uh, you can actually go to the cloud ads, if not mistaken, is somewhere around. No, not this portion. I think it is not there already. So it's okay. If you want to know like what sort of uh, cloud app security uh, can see for cloud app, there's a cloud app catalog right here. So you can search for Dropbox. Hey, sorry, this is search by category. I always get confused with these two bars right here. <laughs> Okay, you can check, uh, you can see Dropbox has a score of nine. So why is it nine? You can actually ex click on it and expand, you can view. Oh, so it wasn't compliant with one of the uh, compliance. So FINRA and so on. You can actually mark it as uncensored app. So once this application has marked as uncensored, User try to use their corporate account to register for Dropbox will actually get blocked. You can actually search for any uh, application that is not Office 365, like Google Survey, SurveyMonkey, 
you can see their risk score. If you ever want to know uh, whether the application that you purchase that you're using is actually uh, secure or compliant, you can actually come to the car security catalog here and reduce adjust this risk score to five, or you can search for that particular application. So they will show you all car application worldwide. And you can click on them and do, and to view why are they under a very low risk, uh, low, very low security score. So they will show you the reason. And each of all these compliance, they have their information. So what is CSA? So they have, uh, it means that the level of CFA star program, the application is not certified and so on. They even have uh, GDPR right here, readiness, GDPR readiness, they even have it. So it's good to have the full suite of uh, card as security. They can do more than just application, so mostly integration also. You can even create policies and all those. So that's the end of the demo. I think you already see in terms where you can configure this policy and what is the outcome of that uh, uh, policy that you have set. So any questions or answers on for the audience? Thanks, Sabrina. I think we are good about questions, but we will give a couple of minutes for our audience if they, they want to post any questions. Meanwhile, uh, first of all, congratulations on your MVP award. And just a question about yourself, about your MVP and career journey, if you please can uh, in briefly share your experience with the audience, that will be really helpful for many people. And uh, being being a female working in IT, anything you, you want to share about your experience? Um, I would say my experience is quite fun and uh, challenging. And it took me uh, two trials to, uh, I, sorry, take me two, three, yeah. I think three, can consider three trials to get my MVP. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I got rejected twice and the third time was that I gave up on the the third year so and I tried on my fourth time so it managed to get it so I mean in terms of security uh, it's not an easy uh, path I would say and yeah. it's a it is a process as we all as we all say I mean in 2017 you get a first ransomware and then that ransomware came on growing and growing, and now there's even an organization. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Sabrina, what was your core area? I mean, how you were most of the time contributing? Was it via speaking sessions or with blog posts or any other medium? Uh, mostly blog posts. I will focus more on the blog posts. And then slowly I will go on to speaking. And now mostly uh, I would say 50% on speaking, 50% of blog right now. Yeah, that's great. That's really great achievement. Congratulations again. And I think we are good about questions. Uh, I don't see any questions in chat. Uh, thank you so much, Sabrina. We will still wait a minute. Uh, thank you so much on behalf of uh, EMS, all organizers, community, all volunteers, thank you so much for your time, for sharing your experience and knowledge with community. It is really valuable and helpful to many people. Thank you so much for that. You too. Thanks very much. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, Sabrina is still with us. If if you want to have any questions, please feel free uh, use chat or if you want to if you want to speak, please uh, raise your hand in chat and I will unmute you. Sabrina, you just mentioned about Malaysian food 
and I was I'm living in uh, Melbourne in Australia and just yesterday I was missing I was thinking we are in lockdown and probably I want to go out and eat something Malaysian food <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. Just... <laughs> I mean, Malaysian food. You have a lot of variety, uh, a lot of options. Ah, uh, because you have Indian, you have Malay, and then you grew up in a mixed culture, and you are like, ah, oh, there's so many choices, and every day your lunch, your dinner will be a difficult. <laughs> yeah. Thank oh, you. I think someone asked a question here. Monitor uh, your feature. Okay, I just answer that. Yeah. And just since this session is being recorded, uh, Uguin asked what what's the name of the monitored URL feature? And Sabrina, if you want to ask uh, speak what 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 is under so we can have it in recording as well uh the name you can call it the app control yeah, yeah. you just call it app control because app control has a dependency with the card as security because in the end you still need to integrate with the uh, card as security to view these uh sessions that is being monitored yeah great and you mentioned sabrina about licensing it needs to be per user license is yes it, is it available in any other licensing as well similar to like sometime microsoft products they are available as a per tenant or in different mode of is there any other mode of licensing available as well um if, if, if remember, otherwise no no okay. i don't think so <laughs> that's great Thank you so much, Sabrina. Uh, really appreciate your time and thanks. Hope we will have you again another time. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye. bye.